Okay, in this video, we're going to compare MATLAB with C Sharp, and specifically C Sharp in Microsoft Visual Studio. Now, I'm going to assume you're familiar with C Sharp and you've developed applications in Visual Studio, and maybe you've heard about MATLAB and you're not quite sure what it is, so we're going to try and give a broad overview of the differences so you can, you can get an idea of what MATLAB does and whether it can benefit you. Now, I've used both for a long time, and I love both. I think they're wonderful applications. So uh, it basically depends on what you're working on, whether uh, MATLAB can, can work for you. Now, C Sharp, as you may know, um, and Visual Studio together is a computer language, C Sharp, and an integrated development environment, which allows you to develop what are called assemblies or executables. Uh, develop applications, EXE or Dynamic Link Library .dll, uh, applications, and one of the great things about C Sharp is it's a very broadly used language, can be used in many industries, in research, in a very, very, very broad range of uh, applications. You can develop web applications, mobile applications, graphic user interface, desktop, many, many, many different applications. Uh, so that's one of the great things about C Sharp and Visual Studio. MATLAB is a little bit different in that aspect. MATLAB, the name MATLAB came from, originally it was called Matrix Laboratory. And that's because MATLAB was developed back in the 1970s by some uh, university professors and researchers, government researchers, to, and the purpose was in Fortran to manipulate matrices. Okay, so it was originally designed as a matrix laboratory. Um, it is also a computer language and integrated development environment, somewhat like C-Sharp and Visual Studio. It's a proprietary computer language, but it is similar in some ways to C-Sharp and some of the other programming languages. Um, my view, my description of MATLAB, it's kind of like a super graphing calculator, okay? Like a, a hand calculator where you punch stuff in and you get the answer in real time. And it also has a lot of graphing abilities. It has so much more than that, uh, depending on what area you're interested in. But at its core, when you open it up, it's kind of like a, a graphing calculator. Now, one of the big differences between MATLAB and C Sharp is MATLAB is more of an interactive, real-time uh, device for doing calculations. It's generally used in areas like prototyping, designing, testing, simulating, research and development. So it's kind of designed to do um, scientific analyses. And it's based on mostly command line uh, commands and scripts. So it's a little bit different from C Sharp in that it's designed as more of a real-time application for scientific prototyping, designing, testing, and simulating. Now, the cost of the two, C Sharp Visual Studio, if you buy the Community Edition, it's free. And you can get um, all of the .NET libraries, and you can get a lot of associated um, available libraries that people have made for free. MATLAB, on the other hand, costs some money. Now, you can get the least expensive, I believe, version is the home version, and that's about 149 US dollars. Uh, that has the basic math, MATLAB functionality. There's many other uh, add-ons for MATLAB that do different um, specific uh, analytical tools, and each of those is about $45 uh, to buy that add-on to add on to MATLAB. So uh, one of the major differences, MATLAB is not free, and depending on the area you're going to use it, you may have to pay for additional add-ons. Now, the target user for C Sharp, as we know, is a huge broad range of software developers in many, many industries, research, industries, business, um, very, very broad range of development. MATLAB is generally targeted and has been targeted over the years for engineers, scientists, and educators. It's more of an engineering scientific calculator that can help you do, like we said, prototyping, designing, testing, simulating, R&D, those types of things. So more of a scientific engineering application. Um, now, C Sharp and Visual Studio is basically includes a compiler. So you can 
develop code, compile it, and make executables. MATLAB, not with the home edition. If you buy the home edition we talked about, which is $149, you don't get a compiler. That's only with the professional uh, version. So it's not something that, that you're going to probably do compiling. Uh, you can develop code and share with other MATLAB users, but it's not really designed the home edition for making standalone executables that everybody can use. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same uh, application in MATLAB and uh, C Sharp and Visual Studio and see what it takes to do a simple graphing um, application. And here's a graph of what we're going to do. We're basically going to add three sine waves, a sine wave magnitude 10 at 60 hertz, <clears throat> magnitude 3 at 120 hertz, and a magnitude 5 at 180 hertz. Add those three sine waves together and get a graph of something like this. And we're going to graph it for a tenth of a second. Okay, so we're going to do that in first in C Sharp in Visual Studio using charts. And then we're going to go over to MATLAB and do that in MATLAB and see the difference, uh, what it takes and how long it takes to do both. Okay, so now I've started up um, Visual Studio and I've got a Windows Forms application in C Sharp. And you see I get the standard form. And what we're going to do is we're going to develop a the chart on here so we can chart our sine waves. So first thing we do, we drag a chart over here and draw it out. And we'll also have a button so that we can initiate the chart. And here, what I will do is I'll first set up the chart and I will have a series, it's going to be series one, and the chart type, we will do a line chart. So it's because it's sine waves. So now I've got the basic chart. I will do an event handler for the button and here's my button click. And when I do that, it will chart the sine waves. So first I have to define my uh, variables. So I will say double F equals 60. Okay, so that's the frequency of the first sine wave. Double F1 equals 120. Double, double F2 equals 180. Okay, so now I've defined the three frequencies of the sine waves we're going to plot. Um, now we also need to, have, we're going to have, we're going to need pi because pi is the, um, we're going to use that in the sine wave calculation. So we'll say double pi and we're going to use the system math dot pi in the uh, .NET framework. You've got a pi variable, which is the 3.14159. And then we're going to set up an array of, of sine values, basically the values we're going to plot. In C Sharp, we need to set a double array, and we'll call that Y, equals new double array, and we'll give it 600 points. Okay, so there's going to be 600 values, and we're going to do it between the time of 0 to 0 0.1 second. And so now we've got the variable set up. We're going to do a for loop for i equals 0 to 600. We're going to have 600 samples in a tenth of a second to show these waves. And let's set up a time. We're going to have to plot it against time. So 600, uh, value, 600 points in a tenth of a second. We'll say double t equals uh, i times 0 0.1 over 600. So that's going to define for each step of i, it's going to give us a time step for each, um, for each value of the sine wave. Now we have, to, we have to define each value of y. So y i equals, and we'll say, we'll start out the 60 hertz at a magnitude of 10 times sine, uh, well, it's math.sine. So 
we got the using the math library and that's 2 times pi times f times t so that's going to plot the 60 hertz at a magnitude of 10 plus um, we'll do the 120 hertz and we'll say magnitude of 3 times 3 times math dot sign uh, same thing 2 times pi times F1 times T plus, and then we'll do the 180 hertz. We'll say magnitude of 5 times math dot sine 2 times pi times F2 times T. And that will define our three sine waves. We've got a 60 hertz with a magnitude of 10. We've got 120 hertz with a magnitude of 3. And a 180 hertz with a magnitude of 5. Now all we need to do is chart it. So uh, our chart here is, if you look here, it's chart 1. And again, we have our collection is series 1. We took the default. So we can refer to that. And we can say chart one dot series. And the way we do it here is the name is series one. And then we add points, points dot add XY. We're going to add XY points. And that will be T and Y of I. So each uh, value of y as we step through. So that should be good unless I made an error. So let's see if we can run this and hit the button. Hey, we got it. So um, that's basically what it's going to take in in C Sharp and in, in Visual Studio. Um, maybe easy, maybe difficult. You got to remember to make an array of y. Uh, the pi, you got to remember it's a, a .NET math library. And the chart, you got to remember how to do the chart. And you also have to, to set the time step. But basically, uh, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to try and do the same thing, uh, MATLAB, and see how it goes. Okay, now here we are in MATLAB with a blank project. And let's see if we can do the same thing we just did in C Sharp. Um, the first thing we do is we set up the time scale. T equals lin space. That gives you a linear uh, range of values. We're going to go from 0, comma, 0 0.1, comma, 600. So that's going to give us a range of var uh, values from 0 to 0.1. And it's going to give us 600 values in that space. Now, the next thing we need to do is, like we did before, F equals 60. F1 equals 120. F2 equals 180. So now we've defined the three frequencies we want to plot. And now what we have to do is define the, the resultant Y values that we can plot. So y equals 10 times sine, sine 2 times pi, and pi is built into MATLAB, so we're all set, times f times t, just like we did in C-sharp, plus 3 times sine, 2 times pi times f1 times t, plus 5 times sine, 2 times pi times f2 times t. And we should be all set. 2 times pi, f, t, v, v. Now, uh, all we have to do is plot. But actually, if you look over here on the right, we've got the workspace, which has all the values. And you can just select um, these two values, and these two, the time and the y and just plot them. So I select this, select that, and go to plots, 
And there you go. There's the plot that we were looking for. And that's how easy it is to do in MATLAB. So if you're doing scientific stuff like this, it's really uh, can be a lot easier. And the other thing, I can take these, these lines of code I just did and uh, make a script out of them that I can repeat. So I can just select these and say new script and it opens up a script, control V. And here I've got a script that I can save and I can modify or I can make a function out of it. So it's a lot of functionality. Um, there's also um, stuff like uh, Simulink. And this is really very nice if you're going to simulate things like feedback controllers and do digital signal processing. So a lot of engineering scientific uh, add-ons and capabilities. So in that way, it's, it's quite a bit different from C-sharp. You can develop these things in C-sharp, but these are kind of standard libraries that you can use in Simulink if you're willing to pay the extra money. So that's basically a broad overview of the two, and I hope it's helpful. Take care and have a really good day.